Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. I first started taking photos, I would say, it was about 12 years ago. And uh, my sister and I went on a trip to Florida and she took photographs and she encouraged me to buy my first camera, a Minolta. And uh, I started taking pictures manually and caught the bug. And it was, it was wildlife that just really inspired me. I do something a little different with my photos. I kaleidoscope them and just really accentuate the beauty that's out there. The wildlife doesn't necessarily let you into their world every day. So when you're fortunate enough they let you in and they'll pose for you right where you want them. <laughs> and um, it, it, it's a real high. It's just very exciting when you sit and you wait and you wait for that photo and then it finally happens. Um, it's very exciting. The most exciting experience I had actually happened on Easter Sunday of this year. I had been wanting to get a photo of a hooded meganser. They're one of my favorite ducks. They are just beautiful. But they're extremely skittish. And um, I, had to, I had to find the timing on when they were coming in. So I watched them for quite a while. In the spring, we get all of the ducks coming in to mate. And I, I probably watched them for about a week and sat out three hours every morning in the hunting blind out at the end of the lake. And just as I was about ready to come back up into the house, a flock of male hooded megansers landed right in front of me and started, they kind of croak and flashing their hoods up and down, attracting their female. Um, and it was just, I couldn't take pictures fast enough. And I got so many photos that I wanted. I was so excited, I couldn't wait to get back up to the house and look to see those shots in which one I was going to kaleidoscope. So I actually left that picture, uh, one of the pictures as is, and kaleidoscoped another. So I finally got my hooded McGanser shot. Picking the favorite shot is really difficult because what happens is, is there's a certain shot that I want and then I finally get it and then that's my favorite. And then what happens is, is, okay, what's the next shot that I want? And I get that one, and that one ends up being my favorite. <laughs> so it's, it's really hard to pick out a favorite. Um, the Hood of McGansers one, um, I just took some pictures of some tiger lilies that, oh, it was just such a beautiful day. It was the perfect temperature. It was 75 degrees out, just a light breeze, and the lighting was just perfect and my tiger lilies had bloomed and they were just this beautiful intense orange and um, the daisies, the wild daisies out in the field and these flowers out here in the field, they're just wild flowers. They call them eggs and butter. They kind of look like a snapdragon to me and I just, I just kind of made a little bouquet of them and I put them on my piece of driftwood here and I had it set right here by the tree and the lighting and everything was perfect. And I was in just one of those real zen moods and I had that 70s song, Summer Dreams, going through my head. And I snapped the picture and I went, oh, I love that, the coloring, the lighting, everything's so perfect. And so I did the kaleidoscope on it immediately. And the whole time, Summer Dreams was going through my head and I looked at it and it was just one of those photos that I kind of go, you know, you just kind of mellow out into. So that's one of my favorites. And it actually ultimately ended up being my husband's favorite, which is unusual because he usually doesn't care for the flower photos. He likes the wildlife. When I first started, I was a huge anti-digital person. Um, but the cameras weren't quite as sophisticated back then to where they'd let you go fully manual. So I only I used my Minolta, and I would only use 50 speed slide film. I wasn't taking as many wildlife photos then. I was taking a lot of landscape. Um, the pictures were crisper. Um, it was you know manipulating the light. I could get waterfall water to smoke out, and so that was 
all I would use. That was it. So then I would try to go and get my nature photos, um, especially birds. I love birds. They're so cute, but they're hyper and they don't sit still. And 50 speed is out of the question if you're going to take wildlife photos like that. Either that or you're going to waste a terrible amount of film. And I started taking more and more wildlife photos and of course they weren't turning out and I would have to wait for them to get developed and it was like, I think I might buy a digital camera. <laughs> they had gotten a little bit more sophisticated so I bought my little buddy here, this, this Canon, and um, read the book from one end to the other because I had no clue of the, of the controls and the different features of it and everything. And I found out, hey, did, I can use digital and I'm being a little bit more environmentally friendly. And if I'm gonna be, you know, wildlife and nature, I've gotta protect that. So that's when I made the switch to digital. On top of the fact that instant gratification. You take your picture and I know right away if that's the shot or not. Well, I have a new collection and it is one of the most beautiful and magical trips up the Mississippi I've ever taken. It, I woke up that morning, my sister was visiting from Michigan, and we were sitting out here on the patio and we were having um, coffee and just watching the birds. And it was just a beautiful day. It was great temperature, the, the lighting was beautiful, the sky was blue, you know, and you had white fluffy clouds. And I just kind of looked over at her and I said, feeling pretty zen today. And, you know, it was just, just a comment. I mean, I didn't, you know, didn't think that anything was going to become of it. And uh, my husband was off that day, fortunately, and we put the boat in the lake and we were gonna take our trip up the Mississippi to Lake Bemidji. And I had yet to get my loon shot, the loon that I really wanted. I had a lot of loon shots, but not the one that I was really happy with. And we rounded the first bend on the river, and there was a family of loons, and just came right up to me, got my loon shot, got my baby loon shot, got the mother feeding the baby loon shot, Turn the next corner, oh, green hair on, right there. Got a beautiful green hair on shot. And I was just excited that I got the loon shot. It was just like, you know, thank you world, thank you. Went up a little bit further, I had a whole bunch of painted turtles sitting there and he just was sitting in such an interesting spot. And uh, I got a shot of a painted turtle, which is one of my favorites. I call him Pout and Painter because it always looks like he's pouting. He's never in a good mood. <laughs> A <laughs> little bit further up the uh, river and, you know, an eagle was flying around and it's not an uncommon sight around here, but, you know, to try to get a shot of an eagle, it's really hard to get close to them. If I get my big long lens out, everything has to fall into place and be perfect so that, you know, the coloring and everything is just right. And it just so happened that a crow was chasing him. I don't know if he was, the crow had been nesting around somewhere. He lands at the top of a tree right in front of us. I have my eagle photo and kaleidoscope. It was just an incredibly amazing day. I've never gotten so many wildlife shots in a span of three or four hours. It was amazing. So that was definitely, they, you know, it was a block party in Mother Nature Land. They let me in and uh, it was a great day. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4, 2008.